The key to its defences is its so-called Tridian safety cell, a rigid steel cage reinforced at key points. Smart describe it as the hard shell of a nut, with small but efficient crumple zones both at the front and at the rear. In theory, getting inside is like putting on a suit of armour. Even when it hits something more than twice as heavy, the bit where you sit is remarkably unaffected. There may not be a long crumple zone, but look how the smart's windscreen remains intact. This is testimony to the rigidity of the passenger cell. The downside of the shell's rigidity is that there's a greater potential for the crash forces to be transmitted through to the passengers. Ideally, you want to slow them down as gently as possible. So, you get seatbelt tensioners that stop you lurching forward violently, and they're fitted with force limiters that give you a bit of slack before they dig into your chest. The car's also fitted with a driver airbag, a passenger airbag, and a steering column that will retract out of the way in a crash to give you more room to slow down. That's the theory, but no one knows how the car will behave when it's crashed at 70 miles an hour, which is where we come in. We've enlisted the help of engineering guru Dr. James Bryson. His team have converted a smart so that the brakes, steering and throttle can be operated via remote control. Dr. Kim Blackburn will guide the smart from a chase car straight into 20 tons of concrete block. It'll be similar to losing control at 70 miles an hour and spearing off into the temporary barriers on a motorway. Surely now the smart has met its match. Kim to James, 10 seconds. 10, 20, 30, 5, give me straight, give me straight, thank you. from 70 miles an hour to naught in one second. Energy that it moved 20 tons of concrete, leapt into the air and rebounded to the side of the road. We didn't know what we'd find when we reached the wreckage. The steel cage has certainly done its job really well. You can still see the original shape, just that one nasty kink there. But don't forget, this is a car without a roof. The plastic was just shattered. So without the, even the strength of a roof, there hasn't been that much effect. You can almost, you can, in fact, open the door. The bits fly out. And it's only really when you come around the front, you do see that massive impact. Around the other side, though... It still looks remarkably like a smart car. You can see the full shape of the door. Indeed, the door not only opens normally, it closes the key. So that does show how well that cage has worked on this impact. We were staggered at how well the smart seemed to have stood up to our high-speed collision, but couldn't help wondering how a conventional small car would have performed in a similar test. So, we found out. Another remote-controlled three-star NCAP car, 70 miles an hour, into concrete blocks. Without a super stiff structure like the Smart, you can see how this car's bodywork ripples as the shockwave dissipates. But again, the body looks remarkably intact, given the huge energy involved. Closer inspection revealed that there had been some intrusion into the footwell, but in comparison, the Smart looked to have suffered even more. Perhaps most surprising was the obvious energy-absorbing qualities of the concrete. The Corsa's greater mass moved the blocks more than the Smart, but in both cases, the concrete didn't necessarily deliver the killer blow you might have thought. But 
here's the rub. The cars may have stood up to the severity of the crash surprisingly well, but the humans inside wouldn't. No matter what you drive, rapidly decelerating from higher speeds is something your internal organs simply cannot cope with. The chilling truth is, the people inside both cars would have been very unlikely to have survived. So, how much stick can a smart take? A lot. But that can't be said for its passengers.